So here's a couple of homework style problems to get you into the mode here. Here's one. Show that y equals e to the 2t is a solution of the differential equation y double prime minus 4y equals 0. Really important to, to read this carefully. It does not say start from this equation and try to find the solution. That, in general, is a, a major task, and, uh, and we're not going to do a lot of that. We don't have time or, or, or energy to do a lot of that. It's very different. It says, suppose somebody actually did all the hard work for you and said, this is a solution. All you're trying to do is check that answer. It's as if somebody did a hard algebra problem for you and then said, can you just check my answer? All you have to do is plug in. All we're trying to do here is get used to the idea of what it even means for a function to solve a differential equation. It means that this statement about the derivatives, this relation about the derivatives, is a true fact for this function. It's probably not going to be true for almost any function. If I take a random function, it's not going to be true that its second derivative minus 4 times what you started with is 0. That's a very special fact to be true about a function. This is claiming that that's going to be true about e to the 2t. All we have to do to do that is plug in. There's the derivative with the chain rule. That's crucial that the chain rule comes along. Now, we've already got a 2. And then e to the 2t, you take another derivative, you get it 2 times 2. Oh, that's interesting. Aha, 4e to the 2t. So I just plug into that left-hand side and see what we get. We get 4e to the 2t from the y double prime minus 4e to the 2t from 4y. Yes, that's 0. And we're done. It's just plugging in and checking and showing that something's a solution. But there's an easy way, even though we don't want to jump to the full uh, project of solving a differential equation from scratch, there's an easy way to make this more interesting. Um, find all, let's say constants, let's say r. Let's see if there's any other things like this, such that e to the rt is a solution of this equation. We know r equals 2 works, as that was given to us. And the idea here is to say, well, maybe there's other solutions to this. Maybe there's other functions that have this property. We don't, at first, really know, have any idea how many there might be. Um, and maybe this is it. Maybe there's a, this is the only one in the whole universe. But let's start guessing a little bit and be do, doing some educated guessing. This worked, and notice how it worked. We're saying the derivative, second derivative of this function should be really, really like what it started with. We don't know many functions that have that property. The exponential sine and cosine are pretty much the only ones that we know that when you take their derivative, and even two derivatives, they actually aren't, haven't changed very much. Most functions get much more complicated in terms of the formulas when you take their derivative. So it makes sense that e to the 2t worked. Well, maybe other, some other e to, the, e to the rt would work. So this is a classic example of going from a forward problem, verify that some interesting condition is true about a specific example, to the backwards version of the problem look at a condition and say, and, and look at a more general version, look at a whole family of possibilities with a parameter, some letter, and say which values of the parameter will make this work. Um, and so that's, that's what I often I'll always refer to as the backwards version of the problem. But we still know how to do that. Because we can still take, let me just rewrite our function, here's our guess for a solution, e to the rt, we can still take two derivatives. R is a constant. That's utterly crucial. And we can plug that in. And we say, OK, we want the y double prime minus 4y, which is r squared to the rt minus 4e to the rt. We want that to be equal to 0. That looks kind of intimidating. But wait a minute. Let's factor out of the e to the rt. Just do a little opportunistic algebra here. And then we have to stop and think for a minute about what's supposed to be true here. I want this left-hand side to not just be 0 at a point. I want it to be the 0 function, the function that just has a flat line graph along the x-axis, or the t-axis, I guess, here. This should be 0 
for all t. That's a very strong thing to say about this function. Not just that it has some zero. Most functions have some zeros. Not all, but most of them. But I want it to actually just always give zero. That's a subtle thing about writing equal zero in a differential equation. Because the unknown and all the objects involved in differential equations are whole functions, not just numbers, when I say this function is supposed to equal zero, it actually is supposed to equal zero for all t. There's another thing that's nice about this, is that once we factor this out, there's something very special about e to the rt. That can never equal zero anyway. So what I've got is an extremely strong thing. I'm saying that no matter what t is, this left-hand side should be equal to zero. And no matter what t is, this is never equal to zero. So we're really narrowing it down here. The only, the only option is that that has to be zero. If r was equal to 3, I'd get 5 e to the, e to the 3t. That's not the zero function. If r was equal to 7, I'd get mm, 45 e to the 7t. It's not the zero function. The only way this is going to work is if r squared minus 4 equals 0, or r squared equals 4, or r equals plus or minus 2. So in fact, e to the 2t and e to the minus 2t, those both work as solutions to this particular differential equation. So that's a very common, actually, it's, what this is, it may seem like kind of a silly example. It actually can be made into a fairly decent method of solving a fairly large number of differential equations. Start with a few good educated guesses, put parameters in, put an unknown number in, not an unknown function, just an unknown number. That's a, that's a huge simplification right there. And then play with it, plug it in, and then you get an algebraic equation about numbers instead of this much more complicated gadget, a differential equation about a totally unknown function. That's a massive simplification, OK? So um, that's most of what you're going to be doing in the homework, is this idea of taking a function and just plugging it into a given differential equation and showing that it really is uh, a solution. Um, and the main thing is that if letters start to appear, just remember that those, most of those letters are going to be constants. Treat them as constants, and, and you'll be fine. That's a good place to stop.